Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today I bake brownies with Girl Scout Thin Mint Cookies. And I interview Sean Posey, the author of Hidden Youngstown. But first, Leanna's Books and More, an independent bookstore in the valley. Well, I am here with Leanna Hillard, and she is the Leanna behind <laughs> Leanna's books. And I've got to tell you, this is a new addition to my neighborhood. Right here in the plaza next to Ruley Brothers, you opened last November. Yes. I am absolutely thrilled to have an independently owned bookstore right here in my backyard. Thank you so much. Now, you own those stores over in Pennsylvania. Right. But what made you come to Austin Town? Well, we've been looking to come to Austin Town, actually in this whole area. We looked in Poland, um, Boardman, everywhere. And then um, when we were looking at Austin Town, nice community, no bookstore. So we thought, there's where we want to go. And the right space the is huge. Yes. You cannot believe the prices Thank and you. the selection. How did you get into the book business? When it started, <laughs> Um, was about a, almost 11 years ago. Um, I got laid off from my job. I was a sales rep and um, Vince worked for Ollie's Bargain Outlet. And he said, Leanna, why don't you sell some books at the flea market, do something fun? <laughs> and I said, oh, I love kids books, let's do okay. it. So that's how it started. We bought a pallet of children's books. We literally sorted them in my grandfather's barn. Oh and that my gosh. every Wednesday and Sunday, I would- Four Seasons Flea Market. Flea Market, market. yeah, right that's there. it. Four Seasons Flea Market's where it started. Um, and then we went, um, then it started from there. Then we went to uh, Shenanga Valley Mall, saw that the old borders was, um, there was people selling books and all sorts of trinkety things for Christmas. And I said to Vince, I said, honey, what, how did we not know this? So we, long story short, we went ahead and bought the fixtures, we got a lease, and then that was our first store. Our anniversary, um, 10 years, that, will be this Congratulations, mm -hmm. that is Thank awesome. You so much. Yeah. I mean, I just, that is such a great story. And then your yeah. Grove City. Yep, at the Grove City Outlets. And then now? And then we just opened here. This is our big town. one. This is a 10,000 square foot store, so. Now, everything is always discounted. Correct. Let's go over here, like the classics. But yeah, no, every book is. Um, and how we do our price structure for the Leannas is every book is discounted every day. And if it's $24.99 and under, okay. automatically you get 10% off. If it's $24.99 and higher, automatically 20% off. And then we do our New York Times bestsellers. We do those every week, they're over yes. here. Every week, every week we go through, I'm one of the staff, they'll go through and check out the New York Times bestsellers. And then what we do is we do the top seven hardcover in nonfiction and the top um, seven in nonfiction, or fiction and, and nonfiction. Uh -huh. um, same thing on each side. And then the hardcovers, um, while they're the New York Times bestseller in the store on the shelf, they're automatically 30% off. Um, on our online, we do have a website, um, leannasbooks.com. Uh -huh. On our website, every book is 20% off. So you can order it online and then choose any which, book. any book, any but there's title. like 10 million books you can okay. choose from. Right. So then what you do is you order it online and then there's a little spot and you can pick which store do you want to pick it up from. So say you pick Austin Town, okay? Yes. Then you pay for your book and you close out, and then what happens, that book will come into here to the store. As soon as we click, you know, scan it in, your name flags, and then we call you or we email you and say, hey, Casey, your book is in. You can come anytime and pick it up. It's here, it sits behind our desk, wow. and then you just come pick it up. What is that, what, what is the slogan for that? It's uh, local is a click away. <laughs> local is a click away. That's right. Yeah. But I mean, Nicholas Sparks. Well, I mean, you've got a lot of like really hot authors. On yes, that. we do. I, I I was so excited. We just got the Nicholas Sparks in about a month ago. First time ever. See me. Yeah. The best of me. The There's Guardian. some good ones. I mean, yeah. my gosh, this guy must write like 24-7. But yeah, so we buy them by the pallet 
And then um, what happens is they, they get returned to the publisher. The publisher can't sell it as new, even though they're not tainted. They've never been cracked. Yeah. But the publisher can't sell them to a, like a new to a store as a new book because they're considered used, used in the book even world. They're not. So That's crazy. the middle guy, what he'll do is he buys them by the huge pallet loads from the publishers, pennies on the dollar. Then we buy them for a few more pennies on the dollar from them, buy the pallet, and then that's how we can mark them at five ninety nine. Here is one a great section too. You have all of you know, all these local books about our region. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe this selection. I mean, with Pittsburgh and Western Pennsylvania and the Mahoning Valley and Warren, I mean. They're great, aren't they? They're, and do these sell? I mean, oh. these are popular, aren't they? They're, uh, yes. Haunted um, Cleveland, you would love this book, Bill. Haunted Put in Bay. I mean, I didn't even know these books existed. No. So this is our warehouse. So this is where all of the bargain books you see, the 599ers. Yes. They all come into here first. And our staff, they work very hard and do diligent, um, a lot of work. They check them all in. And then, um, then we'll put them in here. And then we go ahead and feed the other stores, the Leanna's stores, and then we put them at 599. But while they're here, every book on this side, every book, no matter what section, 70% off every day. And when you are interviewing people, do you um, make sure that they are avid readers and really interested in, you know, books? Uh, you know what? They just seem to. We had, um, we had like an open interview day and we had a really nice turnout. Thank God. <laughs> You know, we did, everybody was nice, and they were all book lovers. I mean, they were all, everybody um, were book lovers. I mean, yeah, you need to kind of like books, you know exactly, what I mean? Exactly, yeah. But it was great, because everybody um, that came in that day just loved them, and we actually hired almost everybody that day, um, because everybody seemed so nice, and, and everybody works really hard, and you know, when it's slow, it's great, you can read a book, but when it's busy, oh boy, God bless their hearts, they work very hard. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. I'm all about local and my bank is Farmers National Bank. Farmers is the true hometown bank in the Mahoney Valley, standing strong for our local families and businesses since 1887. Farmers is also future focused with a lab branch, interactive teller machines and best in class mobile mortgage app. We've all learned the value of local relationships, businesses, and communities. Switch to Farmers. Kamara Jewelers is the place to buy an engagement ring because we want a relationship with you that lasts a lifetime. Your commitment with her is the same commitment we have to you. We want to sit down with you and teach you about diamonds so you're educated on what you're buying. We have the largest selection we ever have, which is the largest in the area and at the best value. And if it's not something in our case, we could always custom make it. We can make any dream come true. Get real, get Kamara. Woolley Brothers has a great choice of quality cheeses. We use our relationship with Old World Houses to specially select the product and then have it custom cut and packaged by our own local artisans. At Woolley Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Join the Island Purple Cat family. Employment opportunities are available. Given is living. Join the Isle and Purple Cat family. Employment opportunities are available at $13 an hour. Given is living. To own a business where your name's on the window can be pretty cool. That's my family. My name is Danny Catullo, and I'm the owner of Catullo Primates. My grandfather started the business in 1962. I was able to take our old style butcher shop and bring it out to the new age using e-commerce to get our products to more customers. When we started shipping, there was not a ton of information out there. That's where we really worked with FedEx so they could be able to help us with our perishable shipping. We were taking on new purchases that we never had to make before. Boxes, coolers, ice packs, anything that was involved around shipping. 
so we can no longer do this with the cash that we had on hand. So because of the plum card from American Express and all of its benefits, it was a natural fit to help grow our business. And when someone calls and lets you know that you made their dinner, that's satisfaction that you can't get anywhere else. I'm Elizabeth Bernard. For more than 30 years, I've provided our Valley with sound legal advice. My associate Jennifer Rigetti and I will be your legal representatives if you're involved in a car, truck, or motorcycle accident. Don't try to handle it yourself. We'll navigate the red tape of dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the obstacles that you'll face. Remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases, and hiring a lawyer does not mean you have to go to court. Call attorney Elizabeth Bernard, local legal experience for more than 30 years. Family-owned Mayflower Wilm Insurance Group is your full-service, independent agency. Our family works with a variety of insurance companies, so you have the best choices for your insurance needs. Let us find the right product at the right price. Personal lines, business, farm, commercial insurance, life insurance. Trust locally owned Mayflower Woolen. You focus on what's important. We'll take care of the details. Mayflower Woolen, close by with three locations to serve you. Well, what better place to interview one of our local authors than at a bookstore? So uh, we are still here at Leanna's Books. And they have that huge historical section about Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. And Sean Posey has a new book out. This was your um, your pandemic project. It was a pandemic project <laughs> for sure, absolutely. And he's written a couple other books, but this one is The Hidden History of Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley. Correct. And wow, there are so many things. I'm a lifetime resident of the Valley, are you? Uh, no, I, I was born here, but I mostly grew up in the Akron Canyon area. And then you're back here yeah, now. Yeah, I'm back here now. So. And you're a freelance writer. Right. And a history major. Right, yes. Masters. Right. And this is really your jam. I mean, you really like to read and write about history. Yeah, oh, that, it is absolutely my Do you yeah, get that's... these assignments? Do they, do, does the press call you and say, you know, this is a really good idea for a book? Well, they, that's how it started. They, they read some, uh, some some journalism articles I had written about um, regional history uh, for a couple national publications, and they pitched me the idea to do Lost Youngstown because they have a series. You know, there's mm -hmm. Lost Los Angeles and Detroit and Pittsburgh. I think Detroit is actually the, their biggest selling one they ever did, and uh, so that was the first one I did. And because I, I did so much research for it, I had a lot that I didn't use. So that, and then I really I wasn't I had no plans to do a third book. I had some <laughs> articles that I was working on because I wanted to do a column for The Vindicator. Okay. And then The Vindicator closed. Of course, <laughs> another lost Youngstown situation. Right, right. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I had to set those aside, and then when the pandemic happened, I was working on a piece about the Spanish flu. And, you know, re doing all that research and thinking about what was going on, you know, my first thought was, this is not going to be a wow. couple months like they're saying. This is going to yeah. be a long thing. So then I yeah. called my publisher, and I'm like, hey, <clears throat> How about a, another book? This picture showing the um, infirmary out oh in Canfield, and it was like for the indigent, it was for um, the insane, um, mm -hmm. the, I, I just can't believe that this place existed. It is and hard for people to believe, yeah. I mean, and you see this picture, and you can't believe this was built. And, I mean, you, you've just got to read the descriptions of some of this stuff. You know, there was a Columbian infirmary. <laughs> there was a Trumbull County infirmary. And they were called inmates. So yeah. It makes and, and, it sound yeah. like there was a prison. Right, so in all the reports I, 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 I looked at, that's how they referred to people as, as, as inmates. And uh, they worked the farm. It was on if like they could, yeah. Acreage. Some people obviously were couldn't do anything, and that's why they were there. You know, they were disabled or yeah. they were just older. But yeah, if they could, they worked the farm and they had little plots where they grew their own uh, their own food. And, and there was even an interesting uh, oral history I found. I didn't get to put it in the book where the men, because they basically, if you were there for a long time or for yeah. life, you pretty much never left. So in the summer, some of the men would go with building materials and they would go out, I mean, because this was a massive yeah. facility and there was woods there and everything. They would go out into the woods and build themselves a summer cottage, like just a little shack, and then they would just <laughs> hang out there all summer. <laughs> so I mean, a, a, you know, not everybody who went there was there for life. Some people just came and then they left, but yeah. some people were there 
Forever. Until they were like 100 years old. And the graveyard, the cemetery. So there are still, you found these. There's pictures yeah. in here of you finding like, and the markers just have numbers. Yeah. So then did you, were you able to find the record book? Yes. Now there Where were, do you find all this stuff? Well, fortunately there were some people, uh, and I'm not sure if any of them still are alive, that, that did some research on this uh, for the Ohio um, Genealogical Society. Okay. And I found their research materials and I built off that and I just, you know, they, they um, found out there was two cemeteries, one closer to Herbert Road, and the records for that burned up in the 1898 fire. So we don't even know who's buried there, but we know that there were people buried there and the bodies are still there. I'm sure of it. Wow. Now that That's is an like environment. Haunted. That's like haunted land site. Yeah, now that I is would... an environmentally protected easement. However, the second cemetery is in the middle of the Stonebridge development, and there are people that have bodies in their backyard, and I don't know if they're aware of it or not, but like they're living on top of or next to a cemetery where Older guys. hundreds of people were buried. You only move the headstones! And what about the Green Book? Sure. That is really interesting. And I didn't realize that Youngstown had a lot of, you know, very traveler friendly places for ton, you know, the really. black travelers. Yeah. The Green Book um, was started by a guy in New York City. And the idea behind it was in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, black travelers, you just couldn't go anywhere. Like there was a, tons of places that yeah. wouldn't sell you gas or let you stay the night or let you buy food. So this was a place where if you were saying going to Akron or Canton or Youngstown, you could look and it would tell you here are places you can go for service. And Youngstown just happened to have a lot. I mean, at one time there was eight motels just in Youngstown. Uh, yeah. So if you happened to be going through there, it, it was it was perfect because you know they had your lodging, they had places you could go food, even like a bar, like Taylor's where you go if you needed I that. I mean, really, I mean, it, and it was extensive. When I read that, I couldn't, you know, you don't think about that stuff. Sure. Are you going to start having some book signings and uh, hanging out? Yes. Uh, you know, I wanted to do it earlier, but, you know, COVID, once again, kind of, kind yeah. of interfered with those plans. But yes, uh, I'm going to be at the Historical Society next month for sure. Yeah. At their Bites and Bits. But yeah, I, I want to start doing now, February going forward, a lot more public events and signings and all that type of stuff. We'll be right back with more local flavor. Donate now. Gava Camp has a generous family that will match every dollar you donate. Help us build a barrier-free educational camp for our friends with special needs. Visit our website or call for more details. Given is living. I am here with Rude the Dude at the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. What is happening? Nothing, you know, we just finished off last year strong with all of our parties in, in the banquet room. Uh, so we're starting already to book parties this spring in the banquet room also. We got a couple things we're working on uh, for outside in the parking lot, a couple different big events that we'd like to put on this year for everybody. So we're just, uh, we're starting the year out strong and starting to get ready. Oh, looking forward to spring. And don't forget, you looking for those local beers? They are right here on tap at the Magic Tree. And I gotta tell you, this Nitro Brew Coffee is Made right here. Yeah, we make it. this in-house with our roasted beans from the Youngstown Coffee Company. So we support local coffee, beer, and food. Oh man, always something happening right here. Go to their website, magictreepumpandeatery.com and find out more. My basement was dreadful. Cracked concrete, chipped tiles, it was my dumping ground. Carpet, vinyl, wood, don't last. Now I have Pebble Stone, the best basement floor covering. It has transformed my basement and expanded my family's living space. It's easy to clean, withstands flooding, and will never need replaced. You will love your basement. Pebble Stone, the best flooring system. Call today to save 60% off your new Pebble Stone floor for a limited time only. 
Ruli Brothers is way ahead of the competition. Check out Ruli Spice World, where you can buy bulk herbs and spices, plus candies, nuts, and fillings for pennies on the dollar. At Ruli Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Is it time to update your color style? RNS Paint will assist you with your choice of over 3,400 Benjamin Moore colors. Vibrant, durable, and easy to apply. Be current, be stylish. Shop RNS Paint. It's the Hunting and Fishing Super Show and Sale at the all-new Expo Building at the Canfield Fairgrounds. Huge discounts on rods, reels, and more. Seminars on walleye fishing and deer hunting. Free rods and reels to the first 100 kids. The Hunting and Fishing Super Show, February 4th, 5th, and 6th at the all-new Expo Building at the Canfield Fairgrounds. Today this is going to be a really quick and a really easy cooking segment. We're going to take it easy. Uh, this time of year is Girl Scout cookie time and that's when you'll see handles with their thin mint ice cream and I thought well why should they have all the fun? I love Thin Mints and my niece Cecilia is a Girl Scout and she called and asked us to buy some of her cookies. So I did and when I got these, I thought, you know what, I'm going to make brownies with Thin Mint bits in them. Instead of like chocolate chips to make them fudgier, I threw in crushed Thin Mints and the result was excellent. And I'm just using a store-bought pre-box brownie mix. And instead of water, I add coffee. And it makes it that much richer. And boy, are they delicious. So I'm gonna share that recipe with you right now. For this recipe, you'll need one box of your favorite brownie mix, 18 to 20 ounces. Follow the boxed instructions and where they ask for water, substitute it with coffee. You'll also need one sleeve, that's 16 crushed Thin Mint cookies, and then two crushed Thin Mint cookies for garnish. Now for this recipe, I'm gonna use a Duncan Hines because I like the dark chocolate. All I'm gonna do is put these in a sealed bag, my 16 cookies, and I'm gonna take a mallet and bust them up. I don't want them to be too broken up, but I do want them to be crushed enough so that the chocolate will melt and then you get the mint taste. So, now we are going to get mixing. So I have the brownie mix. What I really like about brownies too is that I don't need the mixer or the stand-up mixer. It's just you and your spatula. So I'm going to add the oil. I'm using canola. Uh, you could use vegetable, grapeseed, just a neutral oil, and then the coffee. This is my little secret switcheroo ingredient. And then one egg, and if you think about it, try to bring them up to room temperature. And then my broken up Thin Mint cookies. I think they're better crushed. You know, I've seen recipes where people like them whole but I think they melt much better and they really add a distinct flavor throughout the whole brownie mix. So all I'm gonna do is mix this. They suggest about 30 beets and it'll come together and we'll form a really nice, rich brownie mix. With most brownie mixes, there's options, a nine by nine pan, an eight by eight, even a 13 by nine. I'm going to use the eight by eight. And I have already prepared the pan with some coconut oil. So I wipe that in. And I like to use glass more than metal. There's different cooking times, but I think glass is just easier to use. So now I'm going to take my mix and just Spoon it in. I've preheated the oven to 350, and you'll want to bake that on the middle rack, but see all those nice chunks of the Thin Mint cookie? Oh, 
And according to the box directions, it says uh, 30 to 34 minutes. So I'm gonna put it in and I'll start watching it at 30 minutes. So right when you take the brownies out of the oven and it is still hot, that is when you sprinkle on the two crushed cookies because the chocolate melts and it adheres to the hot brownies. You could skip this step if you think you have enough, but I just think it makes for a nice presentation. Now, how easy was that? Is this a beautiful brownie or what? The hardest part of this recipe, honestly, is waiting for the brownies to cool so you can actually eat them. They're really nice, chewy, and dense. I just love them. Here, I gotta take a bite. Mmm. Just the perfect treat. Thank you, Girl Scouts. Mmm. Love these. And I think the best thing to drink with a brownie is, of course, a strong cup of coffee. Perfect to wash everything down. Mm, I just love this. Look for this recipe, my Thin Mint Brownies, on my website, caseymaloneshow.com. You are going to love them, and they're so easy. Cheers. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.